Mark, the new RMX control here from XYZ Machine Tools, how long has it been available? We relaunched it a couple of months ago. Okay, so previously it was the SMX. Now all the machines have the RMX, the types of machines we're talking about here. What's some of the differences? Uh, we've got a touchscreen, which is the first thing that you can notice. It makes it a lot easier for navigating around the screens. Uh, we've got enhanced prototrack assistance, which is EPA, which plays some videos as you're programming to help you along. Uh, we've got the DXF converter, which again, uh, with the prototrack touchscreen is fantastic. It's much easier to use. Okay, we're going to have a look at these in more detail and run them on the screen so our viewers can actually see them. I believe that over the past few years you've gone to some of your customers with the SMX and the SLX controls and said, you know, what would you like to improve? What, what could we do better on the control system? And the points that they've come back with is, is really where this control has gone to, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct, yes. Uh, and on the, S, uh, the RMX control, rather, they've got a new uh, trachoidal uh, cutter path called adaptive milling. So important to state at this point as well, the RLX is for the, the turning and the RMX is for the milling. Yes, that's right. Now let's firstly look at the most impressive, I believe, the DXF converter. Can you show us in detail how this works? Yes, yeah, certainly. Yep. So first thing what we'll do is we'll load up a drawing file and then I'll take you through the screens to produce the program. Okay. So first thing we go to programming out and it's already open in my folder with drawings. So I'm going to select my drawing here and press open. So that's now open the drawing. If I press program, go to begin, we can now see the drawing on the screen. Now, with DXF files or DWG files, if they've been drawn correctly in layers, we need to turn some of those layers off and just leave the shape on the screen that we're going to machine. So if I just go up here and turn off the layers that we don't need, and that's all we need now. So we press continue. It does an automatic gap closing for small gaps. We just leave that on the default. Uh, the next thing is we can rotate the drawing if it needs to be at a different orientation. So we press continue, this is the orientation we need. So now we want to choose where our datum point is. So I'm going to select the centre of this circle here. So I press C, centre of circle or arc. Just touch the screen with the touch screen and it highlights there the centre. Press continue. Then there's also now a feature where we can add lines and inquire about geometries, put uh, dimensions on, etc. We don't need that now, we're just going to continue on to the next screen. So now we're into the machining cycles. So the first thing I want to do is plot this outside profile. So I'm going to press the word profile. Do you want to chain? Yes. So I'm now going to select this arc on the right hand side. Okay, and then the next arc. And now it's followed the sequence all the way around, so we know that bit's good. So now we go to events at the top of the screen, and now we just need to fill in the bits like the depth and the tool speeds and feeds. So I just press OK through these, select one rapid to Z rapid, minus 15, Z end, tool offset to the left, number of passes, let's just say one, no finish cut, 1000 RPM on the spindle, uh, feed rate in the Z axis, 200, Feed rate on the XYZ is 500 and tool number one. And that's that event programmed, it's now green. So it's relied we... on your intelligence for the feed rate, so? It has, yes, yes. So we go back to the drawing now. So the next thing we want to um, machine is the pocket. So from the bottom of the screen, press pocket. Do you want to chain? Yes, again, because I want to join all those shape up. Yes, select the arc, select this line here. Again, it's filled it in. So fill in the bits we need again. Number of passes, just one, finish cut, RPM of the spindle, feed rate of the Z axis, feed rate of XY, tool number one again. Back to the drawing, and then finally we want to drill these holes around the outside. So I select drill, and then all I do is click on each circle, just to highlight it. That's highlighted them all, back to event. So we're on a drill event, so we just tell it the uh, the rapid height, the depth of the, uh, the drill, number of uh, chip brake packs, let's say three, RPM, feed rate for the drill, and tool number two this time. Okay, back to event, that's now finished, the whole program's wrote, so we now we swap it from DXF mode to program mode, and now there's the program that's wrote. So to test it's gonna work now, if I go into setup, and I'm gonna bring out the tool table here, so at the moment, those tools are showing blank because I've given it the tool numbers, but we don't know which tools we're using. So from my library here, I'm going to use tool number 103 for number one, and I'm going to use tool number 102 for number two. 
That's filled in those now, so we can go back and we can now run the toolpath. And now this is going to simulate the, um, the, the programming cycle? It is. It's going to simulate the actual toolpath that you'll see the actual where the tool's going to cut. Uh, that's on one screen, and then once that's finished, we'll run another screen to show the 3D solid model graphics. Now, if you'd have, wanted, if you'd have taken that drawing and you wanted to add another hole or, or, or change a dimension or put another feature on that part, can you do that in this software as well? Yes, you certainly can. You can just go back to the end of the program or whichever part of the program you want and add in events. Right, okay, so you can basically edit the XF file uh, to whatever you need, you know, to change it. Yeah, that's correct, yes. So now we've got the toolpath on the screen and everything looks good. So now what we'll do is we'll have a look at the 3D solid model file of it. So if I press return, go to verify part, and I just want to define the stock size. So I'm going to put in, I just want to extend that slightly, minus 65, minus 75. That's minus 20 for the depth of the block. 135 for the other end, 75, and zero on top of the job. So, if we press return, make the part, and now we press verify part. And now it shows the machine in as a 3D solid graphic. So now you can, you can view this and just make sure that uh, you know, there's no collisions or there's gonna be no potential problems. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. What you see on the screen now is exactly what it's gonna machine. Okay, so now the, uh, the 3D simulation's finished, we can now, using the touch screen, we can move it, rotate it, we can zoom in on it, just like you would on your smartphone, to, to zoom in on different areas. Uh, how, mu how, much of, how much easier is this, and how much better is this than what you were offering before? Well, on, on the last control, it was all done by buttons, so it was nowhere near as, as, as easy to use as that. You could, be, you could spend a couple of minutes trying to get to a certain uh, area of the, of the picture. Uh, what about if you're an existing SMX program user? Can you import those programs into this control? Yeah, you certainly can. They import as standard, and then if you need to, you can resave them out in the format of RMX. Brilliant. Wow, how good is that? Importing DXF files, editing them, and getting this simulation to make sure that you don't have any issues during your machining process. Thank you very much, Mark. Brand new RMX control. Thank you. No problem.